where the laws of the present collide with the crimes of tomorrow. Patrolling these vast outlands is a new breed of lawman. Guarding the fringes of society's frontiers, they are known simply as highwaymen. And this is their story. Long before the arrival of the white man, the Americas were inhabited by ancient tribes some of whom believed in the existence of a fourth dimension. A parallel world where the dead continued to watch over the living and could be called upon for their wisdom. It was even believed by some that in times of extreme danger, the Holy Ones could bring forth their swords and destroy the enemies of their people. October 26, it was reported by the police, police that a band of band warriors of wearing primitive war paint destroyed valuable mining equipment and abducted an engineer named Rudolf Borcher, removing him to a sacred tribal mountaintop where they performed an ancient rite of execution, utilizing a religious totem and fire. We're going to have dessert? Highway, you have not heard a word that I said. Was I supposed to take you seriously? You start talking about a group of Indians that attacked a gold mine operation in the Superstition Mountains, and suddenly we're talking about legends and warriors from some other world. Highway, an Indian boy is being tried for a murder, and they haven't even found the body. Maybe they hid it in that other dimension. The boy is the brother of a college roommate. But more importantly, the murder took place on either government property or Indian property which makes it a federal case, our jurisdiction. Well, do you have any real evidence? Only the word of two drunks who are convinced that they saw a bunch of Indians barbecuing a man they assume is Borcher on the top of the mountain. Highway, the Indians have had enough bad raps. Don't you think it's time that we tell the truth? Well, say something. Look, if I uh, agree to go ghost hunting, can we have that flaming dessert? Mm. <laughs> yes. Yeah, turn your shoulder to me, just a little more. 
Wonderful. That's fabulous. Yeah. That's great, Elise. Come on. Yeah, hand me your head. That's wonderful, Marianne. What's this I hear about Indians barbecuing a gold miner? It's not official yet. They haven't found a body. Well, all the police really have to go on is a mining camp that was vandalized by a bunch of Indians and a missing man by the name of Don Borcher. Somehow you skip right over the part about the ghost, mate. Well, I thought I'd leave that to the mystics to figure out. So who are we working with? He's a tribal cop by the name of Jerry New Eagle. He's the one that we're going to meet right now. Thanks for coming. We got a real civil war going on here. Maybe the feds can help. Look, Chef, we'd appreciate it if uh, you wouldn't go around mentioning our credentials right off the bat. We uh, like to take our time getting to know the lay of the land. I'm sure nobody's going to guess. Where do you want to go first? We're going for a ride. <laughs> New technology is great, but couldn't we just drive? We need to see where those eyewitnesses saw the Indians set the fire. Maybe you ought to consider changing your name. Like maybe Walking Eagle or something. Up near Lizard Pass is where they saw a borscht being burned at the stake. But first I'll show you where all the trouble started. It's where the Indians supposedly attacked the mine. We're approaching it now. You gotta look. That's the mining camp. Hardly anyone there since they closed it down. Well, why did they close it down? They claim it's because the Indians destroyed some of their equipment. The truth of the matter is they never found any gold. They were just looking for an excuse of some kind. since Jake's bunch destroyed some of their equipment. Guards packing Uzi's highway. You don't bring all that heavy firepower to a mine that's tapped out. Yeah, but first things first. That New Eagle, show us the area where the two eyewitnesses saw the guy burned at the stake. Well, that's back near Lizard Pass. This infrared scope ought to pick up anything in the neighborhood. I don't mean to sound ignorant, but what do you mean by infrared? We don't have all this modern technology. Our uh, decomposing body gives off enough heat to be detected by our scope. Well, if anything can find a body up there, it's this little baby. Right way, take it down near those trees over there. What do you see, General? A heat spot. Come up on the scope. It's not moving at all. Might not be a human body. You know how many deer and other large animals die in a day up here? Yeah, but whatever it is, it's buried underground. Look, uh, Sheriff, if I were you, I'd take a group up here and I'd start digging. Unless maybe the deer started burying their dead. We'll send a crew up to dig the area, but if you want my opinion, I don't think they're going to find anything. Why is that, New Eagle? You believe that superstition about ghost Indians? Superstition and legend have always been a part of our culture. I don't know if we're dealing with ghosts or criminals, but we're dealing with murder. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Mr. Redstone, do you feel your brother was somehow justified in committing the murder? I have no reason to believe there was a murder. Is he still using the warrior legend as his defense? Excuse me. from the photos, you've got to admit, the first shoot we did here looked great. Let's fly the models out here. We'll shoot the summer line. It will look great out here with the desert as a background. I don't care what it costs. We have no choice. Please, keep your big trap shut until we get you out of here. Fortunately, without a body, the prosecution is just spinning its wheels. Mr. Krebs, you're on. Showtime, folks. Mr. Harrison, in your professional opinion as a geologist, how long would it take Subgo to gear up to make further geologic surveys? Well, at least six or seven months, assuming anybody would be fool enough to go back up there. I'm telling you, those Indians knew just what to hit. So you would say it was a well-planned and deliberate attack? They took out the core sampler first thing, then they stole the filtration pump. Your witness. Mr. Harrison, I'm afraid I, I don't know what a core sampler or a filtration pump looks like. They don't grow on trees. Uh, a filtration pump looks kind of like a carburetor on a car. A core sampler has a long bore. I, I don't doubt that you could describe it for me, but in your opinion, Mr. Harrison, would anybody in this room know what you were talking about? It took me three years of college to know what I'm talking about. Interesting. And yet my client has never been to college. Now, the entire basis of the prosecutor's case is that this high school educated Indian invaded the mining camp, was able to single out specific technical hardware that could cripple the operation and cause it to shut down. Now, what do you think of his chances of recognizing a core sampler? Objection. Overruled. Unless he's seen one, uh, probably no chance at all. I see. Let us know what your digging uncovers, New Eagle. Highway, what are you doing? I want to get a hold of some transportation. I want to check out that mine. Guards with submachine guns stir my natural curiosity. My thoughts exactly. But Highway, we've got our rig. What other form of transportation do we need? Funny-looking kangaroos. Where'd they keep their young ones? to fall on his face. Why don't I give the bloke a hand? Don Borcher. Borcher's dead. What's your business? 
We're truckers, and Borcher hired us to haul some ore. Is that a fact? Did Borcher mention anything to you guys about hiring somebody? No. no. Are you wasting your time? There's nothing for you to haul. Oh, you got a whole lot of hardware here for an empty hole. We're working on it. Look, guys, Borcher paid us $2,000 not to ask any questions. So if you change your mind before tomorrow night, you can find us at the local watering hole. Yeah. So either use that pop gun or get it out of me face. Let him go. What do you think? Either they're lying or our friend Don was planning a double cross. Regardless, this is a serious breach to our security that we can't afford it this time. This whole thing's getting out of hand. This is not the way I had it planned when we first started this thing. Come on, this is better. Better? Not being able to trust anyone? Having the Indians threaten us on one hand, everyone else in town on yeah, the other? Yeah, 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 and driving a Lincoln. Having some power, making a quick score. Never having to search for gold that isn't there. We will never have to work another day again. Assuming we survive this. Borsha was a wimp. He was dying anyway. And I don't like somebody else calling the shots when my neck is on the line. Your Honor, we've been here for 10 hours listening to a case entirely based on circumstantial evidence. The prosecution has failed to produce a body or any conclusive evidence that a crime has even been committed. Uh, in the absence of any new and startling revelations from my esteemed colleague, I must ask that you dismiss this case. Mr. Prosecutor? Uh, no objection, Your Honor. Then I must find for the defense motion. Case dismissed. <laughs> Hey, Redstone! Hey, man, you cost us our jobs. You're a dead man. I guess you weren't listening, Collins. The judge said free man. We're gonna show you what real justice is all about. Come on, Jim. Let's just go. Get off my back, Liz. Come along, What's young going man. On here? Hey! Get back here! Hey! Hey! Come on, hey! Hey! This is kidnapping. Who are you guys? We're the stuff that dreams are made of. We want to know about the holies. What about them? Oh, you think they killed Borcher and uh, put his body in that other dimension? Yeah, another dimension with the same zip code. And 20 feet into a ravine. I don't know anything about it. How long are you guys going to hold me here? You know, Highway, we really don't have a right to hold him. Well, you got a point there, Jetto. This is your stop, buddy. Hey, it's another three miles to the reservation. <laughs> you want it out? Tell you what, we'll race you back. Actually, it's only 2.6 miles, and don't talk to any strangers. <laughs> You behave yourself. Okay, but it'll be out of character. You're going to carry me off, too? You were my first choice. I need to talk to you. 
I'll make you a deal. You let me borrow the animal, and I'll give you five minutes. May I personal curse? The women just won't leave me alone. Jean-Marc, he's all yours. What are you looking at, mate? Okay, gals, gather round. Okay, five minutes. I'm here to help your brother. Well, thanks for the thought, but it's a little too late. He doesn't need help anymore. Well, I believe Jake and his friends moved Borcher's body. That's ridiculous. Why would he do that? Well, to protect the tribe. Obviously, somebody wants the Indians to take the blame for the murder. Sorry. I don't buy it. Now, if you'll excuse me, I've got work to do. Now, Liz, you can't hide from the truth. Whose truth? There's only one. You sound like my grandfather. His ideas are outdated, too. Okay. Hey, knight in shiny leather. What do you want to know? I want to know when the trouble started between Borcher and your brother. When he and his partners reneged on the agreement with the tribe. Some of the men tried to get inside to see what was really going on, but that's it. So you don't think the Indians had anything to do with the murder? There's this legend, the curse of fire and ice. It speaks of the vengeance of seven warriors who were massacred by the early miners in the area. Some say they returned. Others blame my brother and his friends. We found Borcher's body, right where you said, Highway. That opens up the murder charge again. I'm sorry, but I'm going to have to take Jake in. Do me a favor. Don't help us anymore. We don't give a flying flip what you do with the money, as long as you do it in another town. Gee, I was just beginning to feel right at home. Yeah, quiet, relaxing, everybody real neighborly. What do you guys think you're dealing with here, huh? I'd say a toothless dingo, real ugly, and all bark. Hey, don't, Snyder. We don't need the press. Collins! Here, give, me, give me two pictures of the prize. Jefferson! Highway. Would you give these men directions to the highway? Yeah, give them the deluxe tour. Show them how much we appreciate their helping out Jake Redstone. <laughs> Six to two. Yeah, we're gonna have to hold back a bit, Highway. Hmm? Hmm? Mm hmm? So much for a happy hour. It's okay, we'll find our own way out. 
I think we did pretty good, even for us, mate. <laughs> Need a lift, mate? There is great danger. What's he drawing on the track, Highway? The spirits have breathed the breath of fire. Beware of the breath of ice. Who is that guy? It's the uh, chief, the grandfather of Liz and Jake Redstone. I wonder what it means. Nothing. Get in. Hey guys. DC, me little friend. You do that again, I'm gonna have to kill you. What are you doing here? Well, I was in the neighborhood. I thought I'd drop by and see how the Ghostbusters were doing. <laughs> Actually, I just wanted to make sure that bug I gave you was operational. There we go. Looks like he's heading out. too far. Someone's gotten between us and Snyder. Look, pal, I am a full partner. I will damn well do what I damn well please. I am getting sick and tired of you trying to run the show. Well then, my friend, I have no other alternatives. Jerk. Lost him, Holloway. What do you mean you've lost him? You couldn't have. That thing has a range of over 300 miles. Do you think he's driving that fast? <laughs> All right, see if you can pick up any kind of signal on the grid. Adjust the frequency plus or minus 0.5.
starts Monday at 6.30, only on Channel 2. I haven't had time to examine the human popsicle we found, but I have examined Borger, the guy that got burned at the stake. Look, buddy, we're gonna need this thing pretty fast. Anything unusual? Well, I can't be completely sure until I run some more tests, but I think this guy is hot. As in warm? As in the big burn. You see these marks right here? Subcutaneous lesions caused by high frequency emission. Prior to this man being burned at the stake, he was suffering from radiation. Well, that sure puts a different spin on things. Look, I'm gonna have to get to that mine to see if I could find anything radioactive. Tell Jettle I'll be back before daylight. Right. There's no partnership. You work for me now. Hey, you don't own this mine, Charles. I suggest you remember that. Pitiful effort of yours to find gold has cost you everything you ever own. And if I hadn't shown you that there were greater riches to mine, you'd be sucking pencils back at the welfare office. You understand that? Yeah, it's a nasty world. But I'll take my victories where I can get them. And tomorrow, I'll have 10 million reasons to celebrate. Yeah, assuming you don't screw up like your late partners. Get, get to work, will you? Once you get those barrels out of the low level, bring them up here now.
white man plays with our legends. He's torn the fabric of the earth and brought evil back to our land. Do you think the Holies are responsible for killing Don Borcher and Neil Snyder? No. The Holies do not come to kill. They come to protect. The miners toy with the curse, but they do not understand the price they will pay, as they did a hundred years ago. Look, Chief, I have to get back. I don't know what you put in that drink, but I feel a bit woozy. Do you think you can show me the way? The Holies will show you the way. I'll take your word for it, Chief.
دادی Radiation. Well, I don't know how you knew it, Highway, but there are traces of radioactivity all over this place. A lot of the dust fell between the boards and collected underneath. But this bar, it's jugging some rads. Well, there's no curse, no uh, angry gods, and no gold at all. They're digging something up there. Yeah, my guess is they're slant drilling into the government mine on the other side of the mountain. Uranium. Tricky little buggers. How does that explain the curse? Well, as the chief explained to me last night, a hundred years ago, uh, some gold miners were killed by something they couldn't even see. Now, for somebody who had never heard of radiation, to them it must have seemed like the wrath of the gods. A very slow and agonizing death. What about the Indian attack and Mortar's murder? Yeah, well, the attack was faked by the men at the mine. To make it look like the Indians were responsible for the increased security. That's right, and Borcher was dying anyway, and they used him for insurance, and then your brother played right into the little plan. Well, buddy, are you ready to play cavalry? I want to help, Highway. Go with D.C., find New Eagle, and have him deputize as many men as he can trust, and then meet me back at the mine. Highway. Be careful. I will. something else a good idea to hide the stuff in this truck who would think to look for uranium under a side of beef huh just don't drive over any old bridges that lead lining doubles the weight of the truck somehow you guys pulled it off my customer is going to be very very grateful yes sir and we'd be very grateful for our 10 million in gold well there's a problem with the gold boys what are you talking about you wiped us out you killed our partners I'm afraid you're going to have to settle for lead. It's those fellas with the Uzis again. Benson's making a run for it in one of their rigs.
All right, Benson, stop your truck. I've got explosives! Back off or I'll blow this truck up and make the desert glow for a thousand years! We're giving you a chance to come out of this alive. I'm not afraid to die! You're cool, aren't we? Uh, first, we better lighten this load and make sure that reservation doesn't glow in the dark. I mark it up, mate. One shot should do it. for what you've done. Well, it's all part of the service. Bernie says that that uranium under Superstition Mountain belongs to the Indians. Good. Money do a lot for you people. Right home. <laughs> I know we got started off on the wrong foot, but do you think that under other circumstances that we might have... What I'm trying to say is, what if... What if? Yeah, sometimes it's better to leave the what ifs alone. Next, conjure up a little Black's Magic, then Miami Vice. Saturday, it's the new morning lineup of fun. Start with Kissy Fur. Then the Gummy Bears and Smurfs of a new hour of Alf and Alf Tales. Then the Chipmunks. And two new shows, The Completely Mental Misadventures of Ed Grimley and Too Hip for TV, only on NBC.